Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Today we are going to be turning all of this, in particular these, to this. Let's do it. So first things first here, we are just going to put some tape on the, on the knife here, protect ourselves and we're also protecting the knife. You see I'm just using frog tape and some painter's tape. And I'm just going to wrap it around everywhere that I don't want to put the scales onto, or I just want to make sure that I keep the, the knife blade nice and safe. So now I take my scales here and I'm just going to take my Sharpie. You can use whatever is easiest to mark the, the scales here. I'm using a Sharpie just so it shows up pretty, pretty well on the camera. And as you can see there. So now I am just going to take some double-sided tape to put the two scales together. Um, you see I'm making sure that they're nice and lined up. I have learned that if you do not really clamp these down, if you just try and put some hand pressure, they can come off kind of easily. And it's not really good when you're in the middle of using the scroll saw and your pieces come apart. So I just put a little pressure on with the clamp and they don't come apart, as you can see. And I gave the thumbs up, so we're good. Make sure you wear your personal protective equipment. I've got my safety reading glasses on there, as you can see. I did move my scroll saw from a different table, so you'll see it's kind of walking on me here a little bit. So, um, and. When you're using acrylic, uh, if you're using the scroll saw or even a hand saw, the pieces are going to kind of heat up and start melting back together when you do this. So you, you can either take your time or just know that that's going to happen or use wood. And all I'm really doing here is just cutting to the outside of my markings. I'm not trying to cut right up to them because I don't want to end up cutting too much off of there. So I'm just kind of cutting on the outside, as you see here. So now I'm just doing another couple pieces of double-sided tape. I'm going to do the same thing here as I did when I was taping them together. And I'm just going to kind of use the little clamp to hold them in, in place. So I'm just making sure that all the pieces of the scales are overlapping the knife handle there. So I don't have any anything that's kind of sticking out or anything make sure that I'm all good there so um, spinning that around to make sure that I've got the right length on my clamp so yeah I'm just clamping that scale onto the knife handle there and just um, hand drill if you look watch my last episode I go into depth a little bit more on how to um, make sure that everything's lined up when you're just using a hand drill instead of a drill press so um, yeah if you want to watch that I just kind of go into depth into that but uh, just you know drilling the holes here for my pins same thing couple more pieces of double-sided tape and I'm gonna put the other scale onto the other side and clamp it down you know my kids joke around with me they say I talk too much in these videos so I'm just going to keep talking here, apparently. And they'll laugh at me and think it's funny. So I drill st straight through um, the holes I, I already drilled and going through to the other side. I'm using the pins that came with this. Um, sometimes they have good pins, sometimes they don't. And these just kind of a little bit bunged up on them, so I'm just using a, a rasp or file here just to, to clean them up a little bit. I'm not using my woodworking files, so I have specific files for metal and for wood. So here I'm just using nail polish remover, 100% acetone, making sure that everything's cleaned up. I'm going to put it on both the knife and on the scales.
putting on my latex gloves so I don't glue my fingers together. I grabbed a smaller pin from my other knives that I made and you'll see here in a little bit what I'm going to do. And I did talk about it in my last video on the knives that I, the knife that I made for the kitchen. So I'm just using some five minute epoxy here. Part A is a little bit thicker. You saw me warming it up in my hands. So part B probably doesn't need to be warmed up as much, but I'm going to warm it up here. I tipped the cup there just to make sure that uh, it, all that part A stays on the one side so it's not mixing a little prematurely. That's just a disposable brush that I'm using. Mix it up. So five minute epoxy, five minutes uh, really refers to the amount of time that you have to apply it, not the dry time for or the hard, full hardening time. Usually they'll tell you to wait 12 hours or 24 hours or whatever. So make sure you follow the instructions on the on the bottles. So I'm applying both to the scales and to the knife. And then you'll see that I'm actually applying it to the pins here. And I have found the easier way, so now I'm applying it both to the pins and to the, the knife here. Found an easier way is not to try and push the pins all the way through the entire thing and line up the holes, but to put the pins in first and then put that uh, other scale on top of it. My little rubber mallet, just give it a few taps, make sure it's on there securely. And then once again, I'm using that smaller pin just to um, get those the pins in that project even so that I don't have the pins sticking out more on one side than I have on the other. And I'm just using some of that nail polish remover to clean up the, the epoxy that has oozed out. And then I'm going to have a little bit of difficulty here using the clamp, apparently. Like I've never used one before, so. Just going to clamp that down nice and securely, and I'm going to leave it overnight, even though I have the same shirt on. So I gave the thumbs up, so apparently we're all good there. So this is my solution to my a sander for this project, is I just have a belt sander that I have secured onto my table here. And I did position it a, at a different angle, so that's why I'm kind of having a hard time with the hose for my dust collection. So I'm just kind of trying to find the best angle you'll see. I kind of get a little frustrated and I find a okay solution, not the best, but so really what I'm doing here is just taking off the bulk of the material so, and all of the epoxy that has hardened, that is squeezed out and hardened. I've got, I think, I wish I, I wish I had written it down or something. I think this is like an 80 grit sandpaper that's on there. I try this a little bit, and there's my solution. And like I said, I'm not trying to get the full design of the handle here. I'm just really getting the extra material off and making sure that it's lining up with my um, knife handle and everything like that. Just working it from different angles. I'm going to start getting a little bit of the shape from the outside but mostly just removing what I can and this because I'm using the belt sander it's everything that the belt sander can reach I'm not trying to get in those fine those the cracks and everything we'll deal with that here in a little bit but I'm just getting the bulk of the material off and same thing with the outside because the pins are recessed a little bit in there and I'm kind of working my way into the 
design of the scales there. We're just going to take off a lot of that material on the outside. Now I've got most of that material off. I'm going to start kind of rounding over the edges and everything, getting some of that shape of the, the knife that I want. Again, not on the, the inner parts, but more on the outside of the, the knife, getting the, the shape, really just a general, general shape of the knife handle. Now I'm just kind of working at different angles, getting some finer shapes done, but not quite uh, the full the full shape. Just working some more of that excess material off of there. So now that I've got most of that off, I'm going to take my... Uh, like I said, I think it's an 80 grit paper, maybe it was 100 grit, and I'm going to put a finer paper, a finer sandpaper on there. I believe this is 220. And if you stick around to the end of the video, you will see my outtakes. So, um, yeah, stick around for that. So now I'm getting the more of the, the shape of the knife that I want here with the, you know, the finer sandpaper. It's kind of getting the ends there really just making sure that I have the knife shaped the handle shape that I want you'll see what I do here after a little bit to because I'm not making this for myself I am making this for um, for a fundraiser giveaway so I don't know if the person's u using this is going to be right-handed or left-handed so I'm not really shaping this to my hand. You'll see what I do here after a little bit too, though. So I, I, I keep saying it, but if you watch the last video, um, and then I realize that the last video is so boring. Um, this one probably is too. I'm just, I'm speaking very Bueller, Bueller, but um, yeah, anyway. So if you watch the last video that I did on the, the knife, then I'm, I'm using this, I got this at uh, Ace, this little drum sanding kit that just goes on the drill. And I'm just, now I'm getting more of the fine tune, I guess you could say. Getting the, into the little crevices and, and everything. I could use a rasp and, and file and all that good stuff. Uh, I didn't do it on this one, actually. And I kind of thought I was going to. Uh, I've done that on a few of the other knives, just kind of getting in there. But this one did it, uh, I got in there pretty well with this little drum sander, so... And once again, just really getting the, I don't know, the final shape around, you know, I'll, you'll see me get into the spots where I couldn't get to with the um, belt sander. So, and I'm working on another project. Hopefully I'll be putting that video out here and I use the belt sander for that. It's kind of the same way that I did on this one, but um, yeah, wait for that video. Hopefully I'm not as boring talking in that one, but uh, yeah, anyway, so what, I'm kind of testing this out, seeing, like I said, the right-handed left versus left-handed, so just getting those sh sharp, not I don't know how sharp, edges off of there, and making sure that it's just comfortable in your hand.
right hand, left hand, playing around with it. I don't know, do we have got the idea? No, I think we can kind of move on a little bit here maybe. Um, this guy's a little boring. So now I'm switching to 120 grit. 120 grit, it's easy for you to say, right? And now I'm just kind of getting the, you know, the final little shape and, and everything and making it smoother. You will see what I do here in a little bit to really get that final smoothest. I think that's one good thing with the acrylic that I like um, is just, I guess it's a kind of a catch 20. That's not, not the right word, but uh, it's good because it's nice and smooth and everything. But, you know, if you're using it with wet hands, which you tend to do with a fillet knife, can get a little slippery on you. So just be careful with that. But I haven't had any issues with the one that I have. Not that I've used it a whole bunch of times, but it works. So, yeah, I'm just using that uh, 120 and just getting the final shape and, and final touches on that. All right, I think that's pretty good. Is that enough? Kind of beat a beat a dead horse, so to speak. So now I just, this is just a very fine sanding pad that I'm using, and just getting all the the stuff off of there, uh, making it even smoother than with the 120. 120 is not that fine of a grit, but um, checking it with my finger and then using the back of that pad which it's nice the back of that pad is um just kind of there it helps you remove some of that stuff off of there the, the dust and everything that you make and once again finding little spots with my fingers that um that i didn't like now i'm using a scotch bright pad and really just kind of buffing it up there and well i guess not buffing you'll see that here in a little bit I had to slow down the video. Um, you couldn't see my hands. They were just a complete blur. So I had to slow down the video for this for you guys. You're welcome. The take on this all took about uh, 20 minutes. That's how fast my hands move. Just kidding. So now I'm just using a shop towel and getting the dust off. And you'll see, I'll show the camera here in a little bit. And I don't know if you can see very well, but that's just some, basically it's just some car polish. And I have it, I was kidding about, uh, obviously, about slowing the video down. So I sped it up, just some number seven uh, polishing compound. And I'm just using that buffer just to apply the polish right now. Kind of applied the polish, now I'm just kind of buffing it in. Making sure I get the whole thing coated and everything. I think turned up the speed on the drill there a little bit. And you just really want to make sure that the whole thing is kind of just coated. Treat it like a, a car, I guess, when you're polishing your car. So make sure you apply, apply the polish and then you'll see here in a little bit what I what I really do just to make it nice and shiny. Fun story. When uh my brother and I were polishing, we had a my dad had bought a old Camaro and we were polishing it up. See I'm showing that. Yeah, there's a little polish here. I'm gonna add a little bit more and then I'm gonna really buff it in. So we, uh, my brother and I were taking it to homecoming and we got the, got the car polished and, or waxed and polished and everything. 
and I was, I don't know, 15 or so. And I thought I would do that cool little slide across the hood, which I would not appreciate me doing that to my car now. But I did that cool little slide across the hood, and I slid across the hood and landed on my keister on the other side. That's how, that's how polished that thing was. So that's how I'm trying to trying to get this knife here. So now I'm just applying that polish with that shop towel. Let it sit there for a little bit, just kind of, you know, like you do with a car. And now I'm really getting the, now I'm buffing it instead of applying the polish. So you'll see here, I'm using my hand right now to hold it. Um, but because my hand's got polish on it here, I'm going to actually not hold it with my hand here in a little bit. And I'm just going to hold it with that shop towel just to really make sure that the nothing grimy or anything gets on there. Turn it up the turn up the volume here a little bit so like I said I'm gonna hold that with my shop towel just to make sure I don't get anything on there and just really get a fine you know, final polish on it so there it is hopefully got a good view of it so yeah thanks for checking out the video thanks for joining me let's do it Let's do it. Let's do it. Phone will ring. Let's do it. Yeah, it's dumb.